Greetings to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. And, uh, welcome to our Bible study. Today we'd like to focus our attention on a subject that's very close to the heart of our God. And um, that's a subject of healing, divine healing. So healing is precious to God, it's important to Him because from the beginning God created man to dwell in wholeness, in completeness. And when you read the account of Genesis 2 to Genesis 3, you notice that um, man was created in perfect circumstances, there was no sickness, there was no disease, uh, there was no uh, weariness, there was no reason for man to uh, be unwell in any, in, in, in any case. And um, sickness and disease is the result of the fall of man, and so it is propagated by Satan. Satan is the instigator and the propagator of, sin, of sickness and disease. And uh, if you read through the accounts of the Gospels and uh, in uh, portions of the Old Covenant, you see that um, you know, demonic spirits were involved, uh, that um, lack of hygiene, things like that, were the basis for which uh, people would get and well, and uh, for which sickness and disease came into play. And so when we focus on this subject, we need to understand one, that it's very hard, close to the heart of God, and that it is his will that his people are well. Now, allow me to draw attention first to the scripture in uh, the book of Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 15, reading verse 22. It says, Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out to the, into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name, it was the name of, of, of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians in the states, for I am the Lord who heals you. Praise the Lord. I am the Lord who heals you. Present continues. I am the Lord who heals you. So we see here that God introduces himself as healer, as the Lord who heals his people. That is to say that he, he desired that they should dwell in perfectness, in wholeness, in well-being. Uh, you, as you read this portion of scripture, you'll see that it was his will that Israel, in their totality as a nation, where all of them supposed to be well. Okay? It says, if you diligently hearken to my voice and to my statutes, then I'll not put any of these diseases upon you that I brought upon the Egyptians. In other words, what was on the Egyptians was to have nothing to do with the children of God. Okay? So healing is very precious to God. If you look at the scripture in Psalms 103, uh, verse 3 says, Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. 
So he doesn't heal some of them, he heals all our diseases. His desire is that we would be completely free from sickness and disease. Now, if you come with me to the scripture in the book of um, Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 24. Scripture says, From there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and wanted no one to know it. But he could not be hidden. For a woman whose young... For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Now, what is Jesus saying here? Jesus states to this woman that's not proper to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Now, you notice here that the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician. That means she was not a Jew. And um, so Jesus is stating that what she was asking for, which was the well-being of her daughter, that was not for her. First, it belonged to the children. Healing belongs to us. Healing is God's will for his people. Now, what is sickness? Sickness is really the malfunctioning of some of our organs or our physical body. Healing talks about infirmity, malady, weakness, pain, discomfort, to be at dis-ease, disease, dis-ease, to be at dis-ease. When one is not comfortable or well in their physical body, that is disease or, um, you know, which is caused by sickness. Now, the will of God is that we will be free from anything that diseases our physical body, anything that troubles our physical body, anything that discomforts us, anything that causes us to be uh, uh, in pain, um, anything that would cause us to feel unwell, that would be in this category of sickness and disease. And the will of God is that we may be completely whole. Jesus made a declaration in John chapter 10 and verse 10. He says, A thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now this is primarily the mission of Satan, to steal our health and our well-being, to kill, if you can, aspects of our physical body, our physical body, and to destroy, to destroy our future, to destroy our joy, our peace, our well-being. The will of Satan would be to harm the people of God. Jesus continued to declare, I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. I am come that they may have life as the Amplified would say, to the full until it overflows. The will of God is that we may have life in abundance. And when we talk about life, the Greek word there for life is the word zoe, which means the life of God. That means life as God has it. Now, God is free from sickness and disease. Okay? God has got no weariness or malady. He has no disease. He has no troubles of any kind. Okay? And that's the will of God, that we too as his people would be completely whole, having life in abundance, having life in its completeness, life in its fullness. That is the will of God for every one of God's people. 
Okay? So, sickness is the result of the fall of man. It was not there in the creation. It was not there at the start. When God created heavens and the earth and created the man, he did not provide for any sickness and disease. It was none of the plan of God for his people. Now, I'd like us to settle one thing which is extremely important when we talk about the subject of divine healing. It's important, it's impossible for us to go to the place where we are ready to appropriate healing for ourselves till we come to the place where we settle the fact that it is God's will for us. Okay? So, I'd like to state clearly that healing is the will of God for us. Okay? Somebody asked the question, is healing God's will for us today? And I want to state emphatically that yes, healing is God's will for us. And let's go through the following points. Number one, God declared it. In Exodus 15.26, as we have read, God declared himself as, I am the Lord that heals you. I am the Lord that heals you. And when you use the word heals, it's present continuous. That means he's the God who did it then. He's still the God who does it now. And Jesus makes that declaration of himself. The word of God makes a declaration concerning our Lord Jesus that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did yesterday, he does today, and he will continue to do even into the future. Okay? So God states that he's the God who heals us. What he did yesterday, he is able to do today, and he continues to do. We can trust him to do it even tomorrow. So the first thing is to understand that God declared that he's a God who heals us. Number two, healing is provided for in Christ's atoning work on the cross. When you study the scripture prophetically in Isaiah 53, in Isaiah 53, you'll find that healing was provided for in the atoning work on the cross. The word of God says, Isaiah 53, verse 4 and verse 5, that surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem, esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Okay? So notice here, it says, surely he has borne. What does born mean? He has carried, he has taken upon himself our griefs. What does that mean? That on the cross, Jesus carried, he bore all those things that would be the cause, the source of what brings us grief. Sickness does not bring joy. Sickness does not bring celebration. Sickness and disease does not bring um, strength and well-being. Rather, it's the source, on the other hand, of pain, of misery, of grief, of discomfort. Word of God says, surely he hath borne our griefs. Now, this is very interesting. The tense in which this is written would suggest it's an accomplished fact, which is true, because as far as God's will is concerned, once he wills it, as far as it's con he's concerned, it is settled, it is done, it's accomplished. Okay? When God says it, when God declares it, as far as it's concerned, it is settled, it is done. So, on his part, his scripture says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Hallelujah. He has carried our sorrows. It says in verse, 50, uh, in, in, in verse 5, 
but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Notice that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastising, that means all the sufferings that Jesus went through were to purchase our peace. Now, peace, if you use the Hebrew word shalom, it means the absence of agitation. Shalom means complete perfectness and well-being. Okay, so he was bruised for iniquities, the chastisement for our peace or what it takes for us to have peace was upon him, the word of God says, and with his stripes we are healed. Okay, now speaking prophetically, by his stripes we are healed. Now when you come to Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17, Matthew 8 and verse 17, in which you have a quotation from this same portion of scripture we've read in Isaiah 53, the word of God says, the word of God says, the word of God says, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Praise the name of God. He himself took our infirmities. When did he do this? Remember, he says, that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. So he's quoting something that was declared by Isaiah, or that is in the book of Isaiah. Okay? So in the book of Isaiah, the word of God says, He himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus, on the cross, took our infirmities. He took our sicknesses. He took our pains. And the Bible says, and he bare our sicknesses. Whatever it takes for our well-being, on the cross, Jesus took our infirmities. He bare our sicknesses. Praise the name of God. Now listen, he took that we may not have them. He bore that we don't need to bear them. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. Praise the name of the Lord. Now First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 which also is a quotation or which also quotes from this portion of scripture. The word of God says, First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. It says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body. It's a settled fact. Everybody will not question that. Jesus bear or bore our sins in his own body. Nobody fights against that. The Bible says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. Then it states, by whose stripes you were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. Now this scripture in the New Covenant, book of 1 Peter 24, quoting from Isaiah 24, makes a statement in the past tense, as far as healing is concerned, you were healed. You are not going to be healed as far as God is concerned. You were healed. That means that when Jesus took our sicknesses on the cross, when he bore them on the cross, we were healed. We were healed. Praise the name of the Lord. We were healed. We were healed. And I want to say, if we were healed, that means right now, you and I are healed. You are healed. We are healed. We have health. We have well-being. That is our portion. Healing is our portion. It, it, it belongs to us. 
Remember, the scripture says in Mark, in Mark 7, uh, in Mark chapter 7, as we read, that healing is the children's bread. Healing belongs to the children. Okay? So, the first thing we've stated, God declares it. He declares himself as our healer. Second thing, Christ provided for our healing by his atoning work on the cross. Number three, healing is a prominent part of Christ's earthly ministry. But as Jesus went about his earthly ministry, wherever he went, he was doing good. He was healing people from their sicknesses and their diseases. When you look, for example, at <clears throat> Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, when you look at Matthew 9, verse 35, you find that Jesus went about healing, healing people from all their diseases. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, the scripture says, And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many who were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. He healed all that were sick. So when you journey through the Gospels and study Christ's earthly ministry, it is unquestionable that healing was a prominent part of his daily ministry. He healed people. He cast out devils continuously. Amen. Number three. Number four. Jesus commanded his disciples to heal the sick. Jesus commanded his disciples to heal the sick. Now, for example, if you come with me to the scripture in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, reading uh, verse Eight, the scripture says, Jesus commanding his disciples, if you start off in verse, in verse uh, 6, he says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, so he tells them where they're supposed to go. Go to the lost sheep. Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is, the kingdom of heaven is, is at hand. Then it says, man the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Okay, so notice here Jesus commanding his disciples to go and preach a gospel, declaring to them the kingdom of God is at hand, and then they were to heal the sick. They were to heal the sick. So, in Christ's, to Christ's disciples, he commanded them to heal the sick. And that did not end then in the Gospels. But when you look towards the end of his time, towards the end of his earthly ministry, as he speaks to his disciples in Mark chapter 15, in Mark chapter 15, the word of God says Mark chapter 15, reading from verse 16. Mark 15, reading from verse, or oh, my apologies, it is Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 15. It says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe will be condemned. It says, And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. If they take up any serpents, if they drink anything deadly, it will not, uh, it will by no mean, means hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. They will lay their hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. Number five. Not only did Jesus command his disciples to heal the sick, but also, the word of God says that he provided gifts of the Spirit to the body of Christ. To the body of Christ. Gifts of healings 
were provided to the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. So when you come to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, you'll find in the different gifts of the Spirit that are uh, stated in the scripture, verse 9 says, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Healing is also provided for as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. That settles the fact that past in relation to the old covenant, God declares himself as a God who heals us. Jesus proves it in his earthly ministry. He passes it on to his apostles and disciples in the new covenant, particularly in the gospels. And then even at his ascension, he declares it as a continuous ministry and gift to the body of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So remember this. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. Healing belongs to us. Healing belongs to you now. You can have healing now. So let's review what we've just said in these few verses. A settled fact that healing is God's will. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is provided for in Christ's atoning work. That when Christ came and went to the cross and went about his ministry or his sacrifice on the cross, he provided for our well-being. He provided for our healing. And so be encouraged today to know that in spite of the situation and circumstance we find ourselves, in spite of this corona, you know, so I'm particularly moved to share this because of what we're going through. Because such fear has gripped people. Such worry and anxiety has gripped people. To the extent that we forget that God, our loving Heavenly Father, has provided for our well-being. Let's not forget this settled truth and fact that our loving Heavenly Father has provided for our well-being. He's provided well-being for you. He's provided well-being for you as an individual, for the body of Christ, for people everywhere. He desires that every one of them may be well. Allow me just to close this session by reading to you the scripture in 3 John 2. In, th in 3 John 2, the scripture says here, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. The will of God for you, my brother, my sister, is that you may be in health. God wants you to be in health. Enjoy health. Walk in health. Determine to dwell and live in health. Because that's what belongs to you. It is the children's bread. It belongs to you. So when it comes to the issue of healing, understand that it is your purchased possession. It is your purchased possession. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. And so when sickness and disease come, treat them as a foreign agent. They don't belong to you. They don't belong to you. Resent them, reject them, host them, cast them out, refuse them, refuse to be sick, refuse to accept that as a normal. It's not normal. What is normal is that you are supposed to be well. That is what is normal for you as a child of God. That is your normal. Your normal is you are supposed to be well. Supposed to be completely whole. Supposed to be completely whole. When sickness attacks, because that's what it is, an attack, reject it. Resist it. 
refuse it. Okay? Resist it, resent it. Don't give it through. Don't settle for sickness and, and disease as an inevitable, as an inevitable. It does not belong to you. We thank God for his word. And so shall we pray. Lord, we thank you because you love your people and you have purchased healing for us by your sacrifice on the cross. You have stated clearly from the start that you are God that heals us. Lord, I pray for anyone that has been unwell in their physical body, struggling on the inside, unwell, feeling pain, malady, weakness, discomfort in their physical body. We declare healing is a children's bread. And so in the name of Jesus, we claim what belongs to us. I claim healing for your people. I declare it. I speak it over them. I say, be healed. Be free from that infirmity. Be free from sickness and disease. We speak it. We declare it in Jesus' name. I say, be whole, spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being part of this Bible study. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you again in our next Bible study on Wednesday. In Jesus' name. Amen.